So it's lovely to be with you and to come and share with you. I'm quite early on in January, so we're at the start of a new year together. And I call to worship. His name will be Wonderful Counselor. His name will be the Mighty God. His name will be the Everlasting Father. His name will be Prince of Peace. Our first carol this evening, as we are going to be remembering and reflecting a little bit on the wise men from Matthew chapter 2. So we're going to sing together, as with gladness, men of old. I'm now going to hand over to Chris, who's going to lead our opening prayers. For the prayers, I'm just going to read two verses um, from Matthew 2, 10 and 11. When the Magi saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, whether they were kings, magicians or astrologers, and whether there were two, three or 17 of them, it makes no difference. The Magi were wise men and they show us the way of true wisdom because they lead us to you. Wisdom incarnate, 
the treasury of all wisdom and knowledge. Indeed, Lord Jesus, you have become wisdom from God for us, our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. How we praise and worship you, bless and adore you for such measureless generosity and liberating provision. From cradle to cross, resurrection to return, wedding feast to eternal bliss, you are alone worthy of everything we have and are. And we praise and worship you. In fact, you're the real seeker in the story of the Magi. Promises of your coming, a providential star, a spirit generated joy. How we praise, worship you and thank you, Lord. And we praise you for drawing men and women to yourself from every period of history, every family of humanity and every segment of society. Come Herod or Highwater, those you've come to save will come to you, Lord Jesus. And we praise and worship and thank you for all that you have done for us. May the gospel continue to do its work in our hearts that we might bow quicker, lower, and with more joy than ever before you, our majestic King and merciful Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts a bit wider to behold the great hope to which you've called us in the gospel and for which we praise, worship and adore you. Deepen our adoration of you, Jesus, and loosen our grip on our so-called treasures. What do we have that you have not given us? Whether it's gold, frankincense or myrrh, or a warm bed, petrol in the tank, or our daily bread. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for all your good gifts to us. Continue to free us for a life of caring and generosity, of worship and praise and adoration. So we thank you, Lord, for the wise men and for Jesus our Saviour, Lord and friend, we worship and adore you. Amen. Amen. And we continue our prayers together. So let us pray. Our prayer of confession. So gracious God, we thank you that you are ever mindful of us. Lord, that you remember us and that we can be in your presence at all times and in all places and in all ways. And as we come into the holy place, we pray, please forgive us when we have not loved you with all that we are, when we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. And we thank you that in and through your precious son, our saviour, Jesus Christ, because of his life, death upon the cross, rising again for the world and for us, we can know your grace, your mercy, your love and your forgiveness. What a gracious God and a loving God you are. Thank you that in and through him, we can begin again. We are sorry for our iniquities, our wrongdoings and our sins. And we pray from our hearts, forgive us. And as the East is separated from the West, so they are forgiven and removed from us and remembered no more. Send your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, a deeper encounter with you, Lord, a fresh anointing and be glorified in us as we go together and individually into a new year. And help us, Lord, to continue to seek and to follow and to learn new things from you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And shall we pray together the disciples' prayer, the Lord's prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're now, we're now going to have our two Bible readings. The first one from Psalm 72, and then the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 2. Psalm 72 of Solomon. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him, all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. And now we'll have the gospel reading from Matthew. So we're reading of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And it's entitled, Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterwards, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard, uh, heard about this, he was very upset and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading cities of Judah, for from you will come a leader who will guide my people Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he said to them, sorry, then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child and when you find him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left. And on their way, they saw the same star that they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, 
frankincense and myrrh and presented them to him. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Thank you both. And I'm going to invite you to sing with me again. And this time is Great is the Darkness that Covers the Earth. Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice, and pain. Nations are slipping in hopeless despair Though many have come in your name Watching while sanity dies Touched by the madness in lies Come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus Pour out your spirits we pray church rise with power and love this glorious gospel proclaim in every nation salvation will come to those who believe in your name help us bring light to this world that we might speed your return in that final day when out of the heavens you come darkness will vanish all sorrow will end and rulers will bow at your throne our great commission complete then face to face we shall meet By just for a few moments this afternoon, reflecting upon the journey of the wise men as we learn in scripture. But as we shared at the start of our worship time this evening, we're also very mindful that we're in the start of a new year. And there may well be things that the Lord is asking us to put down for a season. There may be other things that he's asking us to pick up and to do again or to do for the first time there may also be other things our life faith journey that are completely new that is going to bring into our lives and into our um, faith experiences as we go forward the wise men would you have taken such a journey would you have got bored on that journey <laughs> would you have lost hope on that journey i mean the miraculous star certainly kept and held their attention where are you 
on your faith journey today? Are you excited, having great expectation and anticipation of going into a new year with the Lord? Or are you a little bit anxious and concerned about what are the next few days, weeks and months going to bring for us as church, community and the wider world? What we find in scripture is that when people face something that felt overwhelming, a problem, they looked up and they looked back at what God had done for them as his people, what God had done for them. And I pray that that will be our experience, your experience, if today you are anxious and concerned about the future. I pray that you don't look at the problem, but we have a big God and keep our eyes, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. They arrive in Jerusalem. And I believe it was Chris when she led the prayers. Actually, tradition tells us that there were three because of the three gifts. But scripture doesn't tell us that. And when they arrive in Jerusalem, well, Herod was perturbed and we're told so was the city with him. Which makes you wonder that perhaps their caravan was a certain size to cause that sort of reaction to the people of Jerusalem at that time. Where was the Messiah going to be born? So Herod, Herod gets the priests and the scribes of the Jews and asks them this question. Where is the Messiah going to be born? They knew their scriptures and they quoted Micah. They said, in Judea, Bethlehem. They knew how to point other people to the son of God. They knew through scripture how to point the wise men to the saviour. But they didn't go themselves. The son of God was approximately five miles from where they were. And they didn't go to worship him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the King. In our life faith journey, in our worship, in our actions, in our words, may we give testimony to who Jesus Christ is and what God has done for the world in and through Jesus Christ. May we be able to point others to the saviour. Remember what John Wesley said, which I think is wonderful. He said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And if necessary, use words. I think that is wonderful. And I pray that that will be an encouragement to you today our being and our doing and our abiding in Jesus Christ. Now Herod is Herod the Great and Herod actually was afraid and he wanted to be the only one that was the king of the Jews. He was an evil man. He was not a full-blooded Jew he was an Idumean, a descendant of Esau. Genesis 25, even when Esau and Jacob were still in the womb, there was the struggle there between the carnal and the spiritual. Jesus, we are remembering here, coming into the world at the right time, in the right way, in the right place. 
Jesus stepped into creation, stepped into our history. God's spiritual timetable for the world. People may have said to you, as they've said to me over the years, when there is something really difficult going on in the world, and there was a lot of pain and suffering and sorrow, and of course, none of us would want that. People may say, where is God? Why doesn't God do something about it? What is God doing about it? Well, you know, God did and does in that Jesus stepped in to our world at the right time, into our history and into creation because God so loved the world and loves the world. Born in Bethlehem, the meaning of Bethlehem is bread, um, hang on, yeah, the house of bread. And in the Gospel of John, we get one of the I am sayings that Jesus says, I am the bread of heaven. I am the bread of life. Looking back to when they were in the wilderness and God sent the manna from heaven. I am the bread of heaven come down. I am the bread of life come down. So here in Matthew, we're giving thanks and remembering the newborn king, Jesus Christ, has been born. Oh, come let us adore him and worship him, Christ the Lord. In Psalm 72, within these verses, are elements that make up the promised kingdom when Jesus returns again. You know, he fulfilled God's righteousness through his life, and through his death. He is our righteous king. He is our king of peace. And one day he will reign and rule in righteousness. God promised David that his dynasty would be for, for everlasting. And in that, Jesus Christ fulfills it. Born of David's line, son of David, Christ the Lord. God's plan of salvation has always been there from the beginning as the beginning as we would understand it and for infinity at the right time. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Jesus died for us and rose again for us and ascended and is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me interceding for the church, interceding for the world. What a holy thought, what an awesome thought, that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is praying for you. What a gracious God we have. Emmanuel, God with us. He died and rose again, and we have a big future. To live forever in that heavenly city, and death will be no more, and tears will never fall again. I pray as we live in faith and we live out our life faith journey, that we will be encouraged because we have a big God who knows the plans that he has for us and sees the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. That we will have a deeper encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that the Holy Spirit will continue to fill us and challenge us and build us up as church and individually, this side of heaven. That our Lord Jesus, that God will be glorified in us, that we will continue to live out our life faith journey. When I have been down, when I have struggled, when I have not use my faith then and allow my feelings and my fears and my emotions to seem bigger than my faith the holy spirit has given me over and over again turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace um, and that is actually you probably know this, I apologise, but that is just actually the chorus. There is actually the whole hymn. So I encourage you, if you are struggling, 
please have a look because it says in one of the lines, no light in the darkness you see. There's light when you look at the savior and grace so wonderful and free. Yes, Psalm 72 ends with these words and I'm gonna end my little reflection today with these words because I'm sure you'll agree with me. I think they're brilliant, they're wonderful. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. And we pray that I'm sure in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. I'm now going to hand over, I believe it's to Helen, who's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. So let us pray. When the carols have been stilled and the star top tree is taken down, when family and friends are going home, when we are back to our schedules, the work of Christmas begins to welcome the refugee. to heal a broken planet, to feed the hungry, to build bridges of trust and walls of faith, not walls of fear. to share our gifts, to seek justice and peace for all people. To bring Christ's light in the world. Loving God of earth and heaven, continents and countries, we thank you for the love you have shown us, which gives us a sense of identity. Loving God of wholeness and health, we thank you for your love shown to us through the care of health care workers and the National Health Service. Loving God of cathedral, church, chapel and Zoom services. We thank you for the places where we gather to worship you. Loving God of friends and family. We thank you for those who enrich our lives by their kindness and love. And we bring to mind people who are really struggling in their lives today. As we celebrate your love for us, may we love you in return. We rejoice that we are loved and pray that refreshed by that love, we may seek ways to share your empowering and refreshing love with those whom we encounter and those who do not know that they are loved. And we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're beginning to come to the close of our worship service, but before we do, before we do, I invite you to sing with me, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
Well, I'm glad that we've been able to meet together for worship in this way. I pray the Lord will continue to bless you, that you will know his heavenly peace touching the deep places within you and that his face will continue to shine upon you before we get to heaven. And thank you, Lord, in the here and now. Amen. And the Lord Jesus, be all that you need. Stay safe and God bless and hope to see you all again soon. And I'm glad I managed to get on eventually. <laughs> All good thank fun. You, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Meg. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye, Meg. Bye. bye. bye.